Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning into this episode of Understanding Healthcare. It's great to have you back. Today is a Can TV special presentation to showcase the new Affordable Care Act and how it affects you as a Chicagoan. We are going to cover a series of topics over the next 25 minutes, but we'll be sure to call in. This is a live call-in show, so if you have any questions, feel free to call the number on the screen. Today, our special guest, and let me just go ahead and put her in, Gail Murchison, who is an in-person counselor. Gail, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Steve. Now, tell us a little bit about what an in-person counselor is. The Affordable Care Act in-person counselor actually is the individual that can assist individuals who need to enroll in health coverage. So we're talking about individuals who don't have, for instance, VA coverage, Medicare, Medicaid, all kids, moms and babies, any type of employer-sponsored health coverage already. Those are the individuals we're trying to assist. Okay. And I'm going to put your information back up for everybody to have. Now, uh, in-person counselor with the Affordable Care Act, I'm sure there's lots of questions that you get from various points of view. Um, and is it safe to say that you have two places that you're coordinating with, the Network of Woodlawn and the Woodlawn Health and Human Services Consortium? Yes, the Network of Woodlawn actually is our parent organization and it has a few different pillars. So the Woodlawn Health and Human Services Consortium actually is the pillar in reference to health and wellness. And I'll put this up before the end of the show, but a number to reach you would be 773-256-6847 for anybody who needs any assistance, understanding, or signing up for the Affordable Care Act. Correct. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about why it is important to have health care. Uh, the Affordable Care Act is trying to provide health care for people who need it the most. Now, for people who don't have a lot of money, there's the possibility of Medicaid if you're over the age of 65, there's the, there is Medicare. And for everyone in between, mostly, who doesn't get health care through their jobs, the idea is, is that the Affordable Care Act will help them provide uh, some options to go with. Uh, can you talk about why is it important that Americans have health care? It's important because we never anticipate that we're going to have an injury or be in an accident. If you wind up, for instance, in a car accident, let's just say, you can be facing months and months of rehabilitation. Those costs can escalate from going to a doctor, having hospital time, and going to see specialists in addition to having physical therapy. Those kinds of costs usually will take most individuals into bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot of stories like that over the years of how much it costs to be diagnosed with cancer, for instance, or even going to an emergency room and riding in the ambulance would cost a, a lot of money. Uh, is the theory being here that everybody is a lot on, on much more equal footing, that there's some protection against these costs coming up out of nowhere? Actually, it does level the playing field because traditionally people who made uh, expensive salaries, they were able to afford the best health care that this mm -hmm. country had to offer. And those who were unemployed or were part-timers who received very little pay were able to not receive the same kind of care, and that wasn't being afforded to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So the Affordable Care Act, now, can I ask, um, if you were diagnosed with something, let's say you had um, a certain type of cancer, and then you went to sign up for the Affordable Care Act, would there be problems with you signing up, or how, how is it addressed if you have a pre- uh, a, uh, a condition that's on record before trying to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. That's actually one of the big changes with the health reform law is because you have a pre-existing condition, an insurance company cannot deny you coverage. So one of the pleasant benefits to having the Affordable Care Act in effect is that all of us, whether we have a pre-existing condition, whether you're diabetic, whether you have cancer, or any number of diseases, you are allowed to have the same health coverage and the same benefits as someone who is 100% healthy. Now let me showcase for everybody a little bit. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how to sign up. Now one of the most important parts is, is that to qualify for the Affordable Care Act, you must live within the United States of America and must be a U.S. citizen or national. Um, have you had anybody come to you for counseling that might not fall into this category yet? 
Yes, I've had a couple of individuals who have called in and they originally weren't U.S. citizens. They were from other countries. They came here within the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. They also belonged in the category of formerly incarcerated. So that's been a challenge because when you're recently released, a lot of times you don't have ID currently. So obtaining that ID can be a challenge. It's it's interesting that someone who's trying to start their life over does face that same challenge when they're trying to get a fresh start. That's a good point. I never thought about. Um, do you are there in-person counselors who are trying to work within the prison system or the correctional system that is trying to to help bridge this gap and give the identification that people need to sign up for this? Well, currently, if someone is incarcerated, they're exempt from having to enroll. It's upon their release in which they would need to comply with obtaining health coverage. There are a couple of organizations that are out there that do work with the formerly incarcerated, mm -hmm. and those individuals have been approaching Affordable Care Act in-person counselors in the community already to come out to their locations to do some one-on-one -on -one counseling and actually to enroll those individuals. Can I ask um, regarding Woodlawn, are there any other issues that you see uh, coming forth that some people are presented with uh, these these obstacles that aren't expected, that aren't part of the usual education? Do you see people coming to you with um, other problems in trying to sign up? Probably one of the things that stands out, there was a lot of misinformation that was out there back in October. So we're still mm -hmm. dealing with individuals who tell you this is what the friend next door might have told them. And then when you actually sit down with them and you hear their personal situation and you explain the different options that they have available to them, they see that the Affordable Care Act is actually meant for them, and then they do embrace it, and then they want to take the next step, and they do want to enroll. Okay. So you have to kind of educate a whole community. Exactly. So and on the same page. a lot of times in, in our community, we keep that knowledge to ourselves. We don't share it with our family members. We don't share it with our coworkers. Uh, so a lot of times we're out there not knowing that we have options available to us, and there is help out there. Well, let me talk a little bit about what the benefits are for signing up for this. Now, there's a lot of confusion still, but it is important to sign up. Now, we're going to get to how you sign up and where you can go to research this and actually sign up for things in Illinois. But I want to talk about the benefits of signing up. Now, some of these, these terms might sound familiar to everybody, but I want to kind of go through them real quick. Now, there's things, there's, there's basically 10 essential health benefits that you get by signing up. And some of those things are related to savings on prescription drugs, rehabilitative services if you're rehabilitating from an injury, emergency services, and then, of course, ambulance services across here. So there's a series of different services that you can get access to. Can you talk a little bit about some of these benefits and, and, and why people should take this seriously? One of the ones that is most important that it seems like everyone inquires about no matter whether they're going to be eligible for the new expanded Medicaid or they will have to look for a plan in the Illinois Health Marketplace, better known as Get Covered Illinois, everyone's concerned about the prescription drugs. It seems like a lot of our individuals and family members are on one or two prescription medications mm -hmm. that they need to take. And it is long term, meaning that it is maintenance medication. Those prescriptions actually can be quite expensive when you have to take it day after day, month after month, year after year. So everyone wants to know if their particular prescription is going to be covered under the plan that they select. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's one of the things up here, prescription drugs. Another one that I always thought was interesting was uh, now, now pa pediatric services. So you've got dental and vision. What kind of benefits can people see from dental and vision insurance? That specifically is in reference to our children. Mm -hmm. And as children grow up, they need to have strong bodies. They need to have strong minds. We definitely want them to be able to have accurate vision. Vision is important in reference to receiving an appropriate education. 
the dental piece, it seems like a lot of adults are actually interested in that as well. If you select a plan from the marketplace, you can also select a standalone dental plan. But individuals who already have health coverage from another source outside of the marketplace would not be eligible to select one. Okay, okay, good to know. Um, now let me go ahead and go back to this here real quick. So we have hospital visits. Of course, laboratory services. Now, now, how much might it, it, it might cost thousands of dollars to have something checked with the laboratory. If you don't have any coverage, you'd have to pay that full amount. The lab fees, that's something that typically when you go to a doctor's visit, they're usually associated with you have to have some kind of test. Mm -hmm. You have to have some type of lab experience. Those costs are traditionally very expensive and more expensive than the office visit itself. So the fact that there is some relief in the financial part of that cost is a huge benefit to all of us. So that's really what this is. is a, it's a relief. This is a whole system of, of helping everybody with their health benefits. Now, uh, talking about all these finer details, we're starting to get the calls. So let's take a call. Hello, caller. What's your question for the show? Hi, I want to know if HIV meds covered on the Affordable Care Act. HIV medication? All of the medications, depending on what plan that you select, there's a series of names, and that would be the formulary name for medications, mm -hmm. and it will tell you what's encompassed. So a lot of those medications have been included. Okay. Uh, we have another call. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi. I wanted to know, what can a person who doesn't qualify for the extension of Medicaid but feels that they cannot afford to um, get insurance, what can they do? Actually, those individuals who are just over the threshold for the new expanded Medicaid can receive financial assistance when they select a plan out of the marketplace. And that is based on your income. And traditionally, what we've seen over the past couple of months most people have been able to receive a distinct discount in the difference in what they would have been paying within the past couple of years and what is being afforded under this new health reform. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and jump real quick. Now, we have about nine minutes left in our show, which means you better start calling if you have a question. I want to talk a little bit about another place that you can use to research everything. This is the main website to get signed up. This is Get Covered Illinois. So this is the live website right now as we're doing the show. And I want to showcase just a couple things for you here. There's a couple drop-down menus at the very top of the website, okay? How to Get Covered shows you right here, explore your coverage options. And of course you see this little, this little box appear right here. So can you talk a little bit about what people do when they go through this to register? That green area that you see on the screen, that mm -hmm. starts what we refer to as a screening tool. So it will ask you a series of questions that will identify whether you will wind up being eligible for the new expanded Medicaid or if you will be selecting something from the Illinois Health Marketplace, Get Covered Illinois. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, when I first click on it, the four options that show up right here are, am I answering these questions for myself? myself and someone else, someone else who does not live with me, or for my small business or nonprofit. Those are pretty much the main ways of looking at are you signing up for health care for just yourself or for your family or for your business. Uh, how important is it for people to go through these steps to make sure that they're going in the right direction? The questions actually set the course of which road that you're going to travel down. Mm -hmm. So those questions, you need to take them seriously, answer them as accurately as you can, because it will determine what options you have in front of you to select from. I, I find it kind of fun because I like taking little tests online. So, But let me go back to the top of the page here because there's a whole other section I want to show. Now with these drop-down menus, you have over here with Get Answers, and one of the things that I find so useful is right below it is FAQs and resources, or Frequently Asked Questions. 
Now, we just had a call asking about HIV medication. Is it covered? You'll note that there's a lot of questions here. And each, one, each individual one, you can click on them and get the answer for them. There's a lot of questions that are on this page built in. So this is actually a really good place to go if you want to figure out if this makes sense for you or for your business. Uh, the businesses, I believe, don't have to sign up until 2015. So there's a little bit more time. But there is a limitation on how much time it is before people have to sign up this year. Um, can you talk a little bit about deadlines? Actually, we have approaching closely the March 31st deadline date in which everyone needs to be enrolled in order to avoid having to pay a tax penalty for not having health coverage. Right. So there is a penalty to be avoided here. Um, I believe it's, is it 93 or $95? It's $95 mm -hmm. for an adult and it's $47.50 per child okay. with a maximum of $285 for a family. Okay. So it, it is something to be noted. Uh, we have another call here from the community. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. I have a question. Um, if initially, initially, I was told that my son, I wouldn't qualify for your kid care program. Mm -hmm. um, he's on all care. And, and I didn't qualify because of my income. Okay. Can I, real quick, can I ask you, can you turn your TV volume down or maybe walk into another room real quick? I did. Okay. Yeah, I hear myself in the show here, which is okay for me. But um, So now okay, somebody told that you that you, that's fine. We can hear you good. So somebody told you that you would not be able to qualify? Correct. Um, uh, because my son is on uh, all kids and I don't qualify and I'm without insurance. So therefore... Can I qualify as a single, or do I drop my son from all kids? Okay. No, you actually wouldn't want to drop your son's coverage because all kids is specifically to cover our youth that are 18 and under. So if, for whatever particular reason, you don't qualify within that plan, we can actually take a look at and see what you are eligible for because you will need to obtain health coverage for yourself as well. Okay. All right. Thanks. We're going to go to another call. Hello, caller. What's your question? I wanted to know, as a senior citizen, 81 years old, do I need to sign up for the Affordable Care Act? Are you still there, caller? I'd like to ask you another question. Are you actually on Medicare already? Yes. Okay. Then you're already covered. So you've already taken the opportunity to make sure you're taking advantage of every health coverage that's available to you. So congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. I love giving everybody good, good responses like that. Uh, a submitted question about HIV. Um, a caller wanted to know why HIV-positive people must pay for their premiums up front through the Affordable Care Act. Are you familiar with any of this? I haven't heard any information to that effect. Everyone is treated the same, irregardless of if they have a pre-existing condition. Exactly. So the same thing applies to everyone. When you enroll and you receive your health coverage, you'll be notified from that health carrier at what time you need to pay your first month's premium for your health coverage to be effective. That wouldn't be any different from anyone that is perfectly healthy. Okay, thank you for that. All right, let me go and just real quickly remind everybody one more time. I'm going to go to our little over. Big date that we all have to pay attention to is March 31st, 2014. Why March 31st? Because that is just before when we have to have our taxes filled out. So this is all connected. So remember, March 31st is coming up fast. Now to register for to or to to go. Uh, we recommend for people in Illinois to go to Get Covered Illinois. It's the website. It's very simple to find, but I'll go ahead and showcase some more information real quick here. .gov is the actual website address. You can also call this phone number or set up a meeting with a free navigator by calling 866-311-1119 for an appointment. This is 
the same kind of people that we're talking to over here get covered Illinois so you'll be talking to somebody and this is specifically for the state of Illinois now you might be seeing some information that applies to people all around the country but really each state has their own has their own uh, their own setup for this and in our case it's get covered Illinois um, we only have a little over a minute left Gail so can I just ask do you have any final comments or any final points that you want everybody to take home with them Definitely go to GetCoveredIllinois.gov. Um, you can put in your zip code and actually find the closest navigator in-person counselor that's available in your area. You can call them, set up an appointment, and go in and have some assistance with dealing with some of those personal questions that you might see once you get into the application. I just want to say you can trust all of the in-person counselors that you deal with, we've all gone through state and federal training. We've been fingerprinted and background checked. We do hold licenses for the state of Illinois because we do deal with a lot of confidential information. Mm -hmm. And I want to go ahead and remind everybody real quick how they can contact Gail. Uh, Gail is with the Woodlawn Health and Human Services Consortium, uh, one of the pillars of the network of Woodlawn uh, her email is there, gmurcherson at ncpwoodlawn.org. And to talk to Gail, her phone number is 773-256-6847. I'll leave this up for just a second. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. But specifically, Gail, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Steve. Very much appreciated. And uh, be sure to tune in next week. We'll have another edition here of Understanding Healthcare brought to you by CAN-TV. Thank you, everybody, and have a good night.